Hello everyone, I'm Forrest McFree Lava, and this is Speedplay Papal Italy number 5 or 6. Uh, at any rate, we left off in the middle of our war against the French. The French had declared war in order to take one of their two corps back. We have completely overwhelmed them and are just sieging out their countryside at this point. There's one or two random battles left over, but nothing serious. We also need to declare war on Austria, however the British just declared war on us. I think the Austrians are their allies, so before they can call their allies in, we declare on Austria. Now, with that all said and done, we have a large amount of fronts to deal with. We're going to try to defend in Africa. I expect the enemy will pull up through all of their holdings in Africa and move towards us. We will attempt to defend ourselves on the various fronts and press forward where possible, including bringing some forces down from France. Uh, green representing immediate actions, blue subsequent. However, I realize we're at war with the Ottomans, so immediately kind of deviate from the plan, sending our troops in northern Africa against the Ottoman Tunis area, or uh, Libyan area. Meanwhile, our forces keep pressing through France. We keep all of our West African armies together as combined they're more powerful than any individual enemy army, however separate they're not. Also, it turns out the North Germans are in this war as well, something I didn't quite take note of, or didn't realize they would be able to march through France. Luckily, we have a tremendous army in France right now, so we can hopefully respond to that quickly, and hopefully decisively enough to actually win without any significant losses. Now, I'm not sure if they have military access through Switzerland, which could be an issue. We're probably going to fabricate a claim on the Swiss in order that we may uh, go through their lands in case the North Germans are also able to. We're now finally on the last available military tech. We have nearly encircled the German army, and we are just pulling forces from every front to move them, or from every uh, really reserve area to bring them to the front. We've nearly finished our siege of the French. The, er the uh, Italian theater is holding up fairly well at this point, although there is a large amount of combat. We also do finally manage to destroy that German army. We're very lucky that we encircled them and they did not actually have access through Switzerland, which was great news and actually pr allowed us to get that victory. Meanwhile, there is still an issue with a large number of Austrians coming over and our forces in West Africa are doing a great job. We'll just leave them be. Now I had mentioned earlier uh, that I wasn't sure if we were going to focus primarily on the colonies or on Europe. And honestly, that was kind of a dumb thing to say. The very obvious solution ended up being the case. We also just got stack wiped. But uh, the obvious solution of focusing on Europe, as that is by far the most important theater, has uh, really taken hold. We're going to keep the majority of our armies in Europe trying to win that Austrian front. It is going somehow the worst of all of our fronts. We uh, didn't actually face that much trouble even against the French or against that massive German army. So the Austrians are holding themselves together profoundly well, all things considered. The French are nearly out of it right now. We are just attempting to position our troops in the best ways possible and in an attempt really just destroy all of the German armies if we're able by uh, preventing them from retreating back to their homeland so they'll have to retreat further into our territory. We also attempt to get our armies out of the Dalmatia area, and if we're able, we want to be able to occupy all of France so that they can't create any more armies, and that will essentially bring our war with them to a nice resounding close. We have a very big issue with uh, armies attacking us, however we do win a couple side battles, the major campaigns still occurring. We press north against the British in northern France, and the Dalmatia campaign, as you're noticing, is taking the majority of our attention. We did win in West Africa, which is great, and our forces are pressing forward throughout. We might actually be able to fully encircle and destroy that Austrian army, which would probably go a long way towards us winning the war, as that represents a significant portion of their total combat strength. We've also managed to clear out the side areas. And we're pressing forward to the end of France. Overall, all of our campaigns are more or less successful at this point. We do keep pulling out our wounded units. They say that's something you should do in EU4, or at least they did before the last patch got rid of that. I've never found battles in EU4 to last long enough 
to uh, actually necessitate that sort of action. In Victoria 2, though, it's a much more uh, both tactical and strategic game. I really do enjoy how encirclements really make or break campaigns, and while we've been having a lot of great luck with encirclements uh, in this campaign, it's not always this effective, and a lot of times the forces that you use to encircle an enemy army can get caught by the enemy and destroyed or encircled themselves. So there's definitely a lot to it. At any rate, we're finally moving to just try to clear out the Mediterranean, as at this point, we're basically going to lose all of our Mediterranean islands. That's rather sad, but really to be expected. We're also just moving forward on all fronts, dealing with what we can. The British and Germans managed to get a bit of a presence in Middle Italy, just the British now, we've destroyed the Germans. So we are going to have to send our armies down and just destroy them if at all possible. We've nearly finished the occupations of France, and now we're able to hopefully press forward on all fronts. As we did manage to destroy that massive Austrian army, we are attacked by the Germans, however, it's not too much of a concern. We build a new war plan, which is going to basically include marching forward all into Austria, bringing our forces from Italy, bringing a few of our reserves from northern France, and generally just trying to counter the enemy thrusts. They're going to take South Africa, that's just a given and they're attempting to press into Italy around Switzerland, so we'll bring a few armies down to try to cut that off. We also have a large amount of troops that we're about to free from our Italian campaign, now that the uh, British presence has been largely defeated. There is still some enemy force nearby that we will have to deal with. Ultimately though, we are in a rather decent spot. Our armies are succeeding on all the fronts and we're just avoiding combat where we wouldn't succeed. Now at this point we have a full line developed against the Austrians, which is very nice, and we are cleaning up all the enemy presence in Italy, although it is not entirely a straightforward process. It looks as though we've finally taken care of all the hostile forces, and we can begin to expand far beyond our borders, hopefully bringing this war to a successful conclusion. It'll definitely be successful, at least in part in the technical sense that we won't lose. However, we do not have enough jingoism to really press our advantage, which is a terrible shame, and if you're observant, you'll have noticed that we constantly have the election in progress notification up. Every time an election ends, as we've been doing uh, basically throughout, every time the election ends, we've been, inc we've been starting a new election in the hope that we will get the event that increases our uh, jingoism so we can actually add war goals. It's a bit gamey, but honestly, I really... That's the one part where Victoria 2 falls flat to me, is that you can't increase your um, war aims without sufficient support from your populace. I would be alright with it increasing militancy or something along those lines but just being completely unable to really does hamper a person. In fact, the only reason I, um, really the beta patch which just came out is amazing, if for nothing else, simply because it makes uh, election events nationwide and means that really, no matter what, it's good to have at least some form of representational government simply because you can use it to guide your people to be more jingoistic. Now, at this point, I'm rambling and not really talking about the situation on the fronts because they've really taken care of themselves. We're just pressing forward everywhere. We do have to deal with a British attack in Africa. Austria is essentially broken. We declared war on Switzerland to take over half their country. The British keep attempting to land on the continent. However, we're breaking it up pretty, pretty consistently. We have 90,000 men, which is more than any of their individual armies. We do win in West Africa, we're continuing the sieges in Austria. Overall, we are just waiting to get jingoism so that we can peace out. Now, admittedly, that may not be the most interesting thing, but it is definitely where we're at right now. We were able to take on the combined armies of every great power except Russia or the United States, and I'm gonna just knock on wood really quickly that they don't join the war. Ultimately, though, we are... Really, we've won. 
It's just a matter of convincing our populace to demand what we really justly should get, which means potentially we may be forced to just sit on all of these European states for some duration of time and just occupy them, perhaps not endlessly, but just for the foreseeable future until we can make a peace deal that really works for us. The poor French, for instance, have been occupied almost entirely for really a large, large portion of this war. Now, a concern is, well, for one, we haven't fully occupied everywhere. So if there are revolts in any of the countries we're occupying, we may have to pull forces from the front line, which could do damage to our armies and cause a lot of casualties. That is one legitimate concern. Uh, another concern, Russia or maybe the United States could declare on us, which would bring the war to an entirely new theater while our forces are more or less occupied. At this point, though, Austria is almost entirely occupied. France is entirely occupied. Our forces are roving through Germany without any real threat. And we might even take back Dalmatia, which is quite a nice turn of events as we have just had no luck with that area this entire war. Although I guess it is a bit pushed out from our country proper. We also do control the Mediterranean Sea, except for that one area where two Austrian ships are blockading a decent portion of our countryside for whatever reason. We just never got around to dealing with that. We do go ahead and start dealing with that right now, though. Ultimately, we did stick more or less to the plan. And we're going to continue just calling elections and hopefully getting our people... Uh, on the side of war goals. We might have to deal with more enemy armies in that big circle. They keep crossing over. We're just going to make some lazy thrusts in various directions as these squiggly arrows represent. And ultimately, let's take a look at the wars. We've lost 300,000 men compared to the British over 1 million men lost. We've lost a little under 300,000 men against 550,000 Austrians and 71,000 men against 144 Dutch and Swiss. Thank you very much for watching.